Welcome to my Consumer Insight presentation. My name is Callum Mason Ferreira and I am a second year marketing management student at Leeds Beckett University. I will be looking at Tesco and how they utilise different consumer behaviour theories to beat their competitors and remain market leaders within the UK food retail industry. To start, it is important we learn a little more about Tesco and what they offer the market. Tesco are a multinational grocery and general merchandise retailer operating all over the world. Founded in 1919 by Jack Cohen, Tesco has grown the brand from a singular shop to almost 7,000 worldwide. Whilst their main focus is the UK and Republic of Ireland, they also have locations in Eastern Europe and parts of Asia, most notably the Czech Republic, Poland and Malaysia. Not only does this expose the Tesco brand to more potential customers around the world, it also allows them to enter new markets with fewer barriers due to their reputation and history of doing business. This ever-expanding portfolio will grant more opportunities and help them dominate the industry on a global scale. Tesco's core product offerings remain food and beverages, but they have extended over the year to supply clothing, household, technology and hardware, and other non-food ranges. They also have their own home delivery service, which is accessible through their website, financial services, and petrol retailing. Tesco thrive on being the champion for their customers and aim to stay true to their core business value, serving shoppers a little better every day. In a recent study by Statista in 2020, Tesco ranked number one for market share in the UK. As of October 2020, they hold 26.9% of the market, with competitors such as Sainsbury's and Asda ranking second and third, with 14.9% and 14.4% of the market, respectively. Tesco target everyday people that appreciate everyday items at an everyday price. It's hard to pinpoint Tesco's target market to a specific demographic, but families aged between 22 and 45 would be the most appropriate. Their variation of product offerings and pricing strategies are why the Tesco brand appeals to the majority of customers. To explain this further, we'll use the product pizza to explain. When accessing the Tesco website to examine the product portfolio, we can see they offer an everyday value item priced at 99 pence. Whilst being sold under a subsidiary brand, Tesco offer all of their everyday products under the name Hearty Food & Co. Next is their middle range, the standard Tesco pepperoni pizza, which is priced at £3.50. This is slightly more expensive, but is acceptable for the majority of consumers. Moving on is Tesco's premium range. Their Tesco finest products are priced high, but signify the best quality Tesco has to offer in many areas, such as ingredient quality, packaging and taste. This is priced at £4.50. Lastly, we have products that Tesco stock, but don't actually own. This pizza is a product of Pizza Express and priced at £5. Another important aspect to consider is Tesco's club card incentive. By signing up to their free membership program, customers can rack up club card points to work towards vouchers and also make use of exclusive offers like the one above. A club card member can purchase a Pizza Express pizza for half price at £2.50 to the opposed £5. Tesco's ability to offer different variations of different products at a varied price range allows them to entice the most customers possible. Lastly, we'll take a look at other services Tesco supply to a different target market. Tesco own Booker Wholesale, where small business owners and companies operating in the hospitality industry can purchase items in bulk for a lower retail price. Tesco also founded Dunhumby, a customer data organisation that tried to unpin the science behind shoppers to inform business decisions. So first off, we'll be looking at decision making and involvement. This focuses on internal problem solving and a consumer's perceived involvement in a product, service or organisation. A number of online sources state that an average person makes 35,000 decisions per day. Whilst most are subconscious, it's a clear indicator that organisations need to be relaying information that positively influences consumers and makes it easier for buying decisions to be resolved. So when looking at involvement theory, we'll be considering a number of different factors and how they directly affect Tesco and other food retailers. We'll start with product involvement. This is the level of involvement in a product or service depending on perceived risk and the interest the consumer has for the product or service. So there's a couple of risks we're going to consider um, to this. So there's monetary. So is the product or service cheap? Is it expensive? Do they offer a product or service at a correct financial position? So 
Tesco are market leaders as they provide the majority of products at a low price point and operate using a cost leadership pricing strategy, meaning the monetary risk is very low. So it's not really a problem for them. Um, next up, we have the social risk. So how will consumers be perceived uh, when engaging in a product or service? Will the consumer fit in? So like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, Tesco are a multinational corporation. Um, they offer a wide range of products for a wide target audience. Um, whilst 42% of supermarket customers are in the 24 to 35 age bracket, Tesco don't limit their product offerings to this demographic. Um, and because of this, the social risk isn't, isn't pre uh, relevant. So Tesco's ease of accessibility, pricing strategy, product offerings help vindicate them as market leaders and make them a trusted, safe retailer that consumers can rely on. Moving on, we have message response involvement. So this represents how motivated an individual is to process information or content in a particular advertisement. So this could range from TV ads, billboards, radio ads, uh, in-store products, advertisements or placement. Um, there are a number of key factors that need to be considered when trying to relay a message to a consumer in pretty much every industry. So you need to ensure that the message is relevant and does it make sense to the cons consumer? Do they understand the information being portrayed? Is there a clear call to action? Um, so if you're trying to employ self-promotion strategy um, or maybe there's a new product that you're trying to get out there. Um, ethical factors, so does the message being portrayed comply to ethical regulations? So this could be sustainability uh, or something like that. And then lastly, we have societal. So does the message resonate within society or potentially tackle a current issue that's being raised within the public eye? So this could uh, relate to what's happened in the past year with the Black Lives Matter protests and recently the women's rights and safety protests. So on the screen, uh, there are two examples of different ad campaigns using the same delivery approach. So on the left um, is an example of Tesco using advertising to promote their products. Uh, so whilst they haven't directly used sales promotion and strategy, they've clearly grouped together a range of products that make up a meal for four. Um, they're reinforcing the slogan, every little helps, because they are providing a shopping list for the customers and they're directly marketing themselves to the target market, which uh, we said before was families aged between 24 and 35. Um, on the right, so that's a, this is a more recent marketing focus. Uh, it comes from their campaign of uh, Tesco's Food Love Stories. So Tesco are clearly trying to emphasise their healthy, hearty family focus. Um, and the website actually reads, make the food you love for the people you love and discover ingredients with a real story. So they're directly trying to use storytelling to enhance engagement and create a real narrative um, and find common ground within the customers. So an article I've read, Sonia Ferrari, um, helps reinforce this. Is uh, She went on to say, storytelling becomes a very powerful customer relationship marketing and image building medium, which also contributes to enduring competitive advantage. So Tesco are again trying to influence the core values on the British public, understanding customers, being the first to meet their needs. Finally, we'll be looking at how organisations can increase involvement. So the more the consumer is involved in your brand and your products, uh, the more likely they are to invest and to be loyal. Um, so the two key strategies that Tesco utilise are one, um, telling a story. So I've already mentioned this, but it needs to be reiterated because it is important. Um, it allows the brand uh, to really get a message across um, that feels more personal. And it also allows for an emotional connection uh, the second is building relationships. So whilst this is similar to storytelling, um, it allows messages to be perceived by consumers in a personalised way and makes them feel as though they're being treated as individuals, not just as a mass market. So moving on to the next topic, learning and memory. So starting with the basics, uh, learning is the acquisition of knowledge or skills through study, experience, or being taught. So in consumer marketing, the definition is slightly different. So learning is identified as a psychological variable that can significantly affect the purchasing decision process for consumers. It's the foundation of consumer behavior 
and it really dictates decisions and actions to all the brand. So we'll be focusing on operant conditioning, also known as instrumental conditioning, uh, which is an example of behavioural learning. So operant conditioning is where desired behaviour is learned over a period of time by a system of rewards and punishments. So these consequences will ultimately decide whether or not the consumer will continue or stop a certain behaviour. An example of operant conditioning that directly links to Tesco is their loyalty card programme, better known as the Tesco Club Card. This programme allows you to collect points, get vouchers and enjoy rewards. This only works if you learn the behaviour of using your club card consistently. The key learning outcome from this process for consumers is known as positive reinforcement. This is positive effect for repeated behaviour. Once the consumer understands that they can, if, if they consistently scan their club card, they receive their awards, um, they'll continue to carry out that process as it's such a small task. Alongside the learning outcome, the consumer and organisation needs to understand the reinforcement schedule. So the Tesco Club Card relates to the fixed ratio schedule. And this means that the consumer's positive outcomes and rewards depend on the consumer's previous behaviour. The consumer has to behave in a certain way at a specific rate to receive the positive outcome. It relies solely on the consumer. And just in relation to how the Club Card works, so it's, uh, the consumer will receive one Club Card point per pound spent with the company. So whilst the Tesco Club Card is a good way for consumers to gain rewards by shopping and Tesco to receive data about shopping trends and sales, it's not a unique idea. Almost all of Tesco's competitions uh, offer a similar program and it isn't necessarily a pull strategy to entice new or existing customers to join the scheme. So next we'll be looking at the idea of the family and the reference groups. So this is a large consumer behaviour topic, but it's all about the people around you that influence purchasing, behavioural and perceptual decisions towards a brand or organisation. So we'll be focusing on the family influence, and in particular, the female economy theory by Silverstone and Sayre. So this theory states that women represent the largest marketing opportunity in the world. Um, they also say that women control $20 trillion in annual consumer spending. So one of Tesco's more recent ventures and new product offerings um, over the last sort of 15, 20 years um, is their clothing department. So this is known as f and Clothing. So in May 2017, Tesco partnered with advertising agency Odd to launch their new global campaign for their spring-summer f and collection. Um, they called it Supermarket Woman, um, which was them clearly understanding their target market and relating to the female economy theory. Um, they also understand their boundaries as a leader within food retail and they really do understand that they are food retail um, but they celebrated their background um, in the advertisement um, representing a catwalk, catwalk uh, through a supermarket aisles. Um, the advert cleverly incorporates humour throughout um, that being an example but also finishes with I was only looking for ice cream. It again signifies Tesco's target audience um, whilst reminding the public that they have a wide product offering also. So the last topic we'll be covering is consumer values. Um, looking at the definition by Schwartz and Bilski, value is a belief about some desirable end state that transcends specific situations, guides selection of behaviour and are ordered by relative importance. So it's all about what is important in the consumer's life. What do they consider valuable? Now obviously that's subjective. Um, it's completely subjective, like I said, and differs from person to person. Um, to look at this further, we'll be looking at the rock each value. So rock each breaks values down into two categories. So on the left, we have terminal values. And on the right, we have instrumental values. So Starting with terminal, so terminal values are the consumer's end values, the end goal in their life. Um, so this could be, do they want a comfortable life? Um, do they want family security? Or do they just want true friendship? Um, these are the things that people feel are important in their lives and ultimately what they want to achieve before they die. Moving on, we have instrumental values. So these are based upon personality, 
and characteristics that the consumer has. And it really is the basis of how they reach their terminal values. So these range from ambition to courage and to honesty, among many more. But um, a key takeaway from this model is that consumers can share the same terminal values, but their instrumental values may differ based on their characteristics. Uh, this is important for marketeers and organisations such as Tesco to understand, as ultimately they are serving the consumer. Um, they need to understand what the consumer wants to achieve in their life and how they're going to go about achieving that so that we can intercept that at a certain point and provide them with what they need. So, Tesco, how have they utilised the idea of consumer values in their ad campaigns? So before we dive into that, we need to introduce another model. So this is the means and chain model. So Tesco are a food retailer. Um, they offer a wide range of products to a wide target audience. And it's, it's hard for them to focus on just a single product. They have thousands and thousands of products in their stores. Um, so what they can do instead is focus on a lifestyle and a set of values that will resonate within consumers. So the means end chain model is used to connect the consumer's end goals, also known as the terminal values, to the product attributes. In January 2018, Tesco launched their Healthy Little Swaps campaign in an effort to promote healthier snacking for children. So as you can see on the screen, the idea was to provide a healthier alternative to weekly shopping essentials. So a couple of examples, we'll just run through them. So a bottle of strawberry Volvic water is priced at 70 pence, but if you opted for the sugar-free alternative, you could save 20p. Whilst it might not seem like a large sum, if applied to all the items, as you can see on the uh, helpful little swap basket, you could save up to 18%. Um, so now let's apply this idea to this uh, means end chain model. So we're going to choose a product, uh, we'll just choose Cheerios for example. Um, so first the concrete attributes. So the concrete attributes are that it's got less sugar and it's, at it's priced at a lower price point. Second, so the abstract attributes. So it's a more natural product and it's only using one grain which is oats as opposed to multi-grains. So the oats and the wheats and the uh, barley and the other things like that. So the third point, um, so the functional consequences. So these are the benefits. Um, so it's a healthier product and it's economically better. Moving on to the self-knowledge part. So that we'll start with the psychological consequences. So again, the, these are the benefits. So parents feel more relaxed about children's health after knowing they've bought a product that is better for their child. Um, it also contributes to responsible eating habits in the future. So the parent might think that if they start giving their children food that is good for them at a younger age, they will continue to do so at a later age and ultimately have a healthier lifestyle. So the terminal values. So these are the, the end goals that the parent will feel after purchasing this product. So overall family health, uh, bringing a product in that is better for them, um, healthier lifestyle, and also quality of life. So to conclude, um, Tesco successfully utilised a number of consumer behaviour theories to increase involvement, increase engagement, provide for an easy decision making process, but most importantly, they stick to their values and offer a safe and trusted place to shop. There needs to be a correct balance between product offerings, customer experience and company culture, to name a few. But it's it's all about meeting the cust customer's needs uh, and really understanding what makes them tick. Um, Tesco understand this and um, sit at the top of the market, continuing to grow nationally and globally. So this was my consumer insight presentation um, on the consumer behaviour theories for Tesco. Um, I hope you've enjoyed um, and yeah, uh, the references are going to follow this. Thank you.